US Secretary of State Antony Blinken departs for a trip to Israel and further into the Middle East. Michael, I want to bring you in at this point. Stand with us. Um, you describe yourself as an international education organisation that supports Israel and fights anti-Semitism. You're joining us from Jerusalem tonight. We do appreciate it. Do you accept that there is growing concern about Israel's actions now, the bombardment of Gaza and the growing civilian casualties we're seeing that is threatening your movement and your aim, I suppose, for global support, which is looking for people to stand with Israel? Well, thank you for having me. I, I listened to Donatella speak on behalf of Amnesty International, and there was one word that was missing from anything she said. She didn't mention the word Hamas. So here she is saying she's going to be investigating Israel, and yet she had not one word for the terrorists who brought this about. Um, of course, October the 7th was terrible. I lived through it. Um, at 6.30 in the morning on our holiday, the equivalent of Christmas Day, uh, we were heading to the bomb shelter with Israelis all over the country while 3,000 Hamas terrorists were infiltrating, massacring, burning people alive, burning babies alive, beheading them, uh, raping women en masse, and then kidnapping them, throwing them onto trucks and taking them into Gaza. Another thing that was, met, was not mentioned by Donatella is that currently 240 citizens, civilians, uh, men, women, children, Holocaust survivors, elderly, disabled babies are kidnapped within Gaza. So Israel may be uh, considered to be emotional. I think we should all be emotional about this. It should be an outcry. And it's an absolute disgrace that Donatella didn't mention one word about those poor people for four weeks in Hamas captivity in Gaza. Michael, That's why Michael, this is happening. I think it's, it's accepted Hamas that there is condemnation globally for the Hamas attack of October 7th mm -hmm. and the deep trauma that was visited on Israel and, and the death of 1,400 um, people there. There. But can the bombardment of Gaza and the killing of civilians there make Israel safe? Do people in Israel believe that to be true? I think people in Israel think that the future for Palestinians and Israelis will be better without Hamas. And unfortunately, Israel is fighting a war that no Western nation has really fought before. Of course, uh, the West routed ISIS, but Hamas are so embedded within Gaza, they've taken international aid and spent it on a network of tunnels. So they're un right underneath our hospitals and schools. And I've visited schools well, in southern Israel now, that have been rocketed. Sorry, just to interrupt you on that, because we sure. are hearing now that the international aid that is so desperately needed in the region, we heard from Mike Ryan of the WHO, that it is simply not getting through, that hospitals are having to shut their operations right now. Is that what people in Israel want to see happen? No, and dozens of trucks of aid have gone through today uh, into I Gaza. Israelis want, is, Israelis want Palestinians to be living and free and democratic and be in peace with us. Mm. And that's what we could see in a future without Hamas. Unfortunately, Hamas embed themselves, hiding themselves under hospitals and schools, forcing Israelis to go in. Don't forget, Israel doesn't want to be in Gaza. They left Gaza for peace 18 years ago. The Palestinians have had 18 years to build a society there, flourishing and free with full international aid, and Hamas, an organization that has 1.5 billion at its fingertips, instead has yeah. spent it there's on also, terror. It, so it, is worth saying there, it is worth saying, though, isn't it, that there's also been a sea and an air blockade on Gaza that, you know, it has been described as an open air prison for a reason. Well, there's been a blockade to avoid weaponry going in, and Hamas proved this week why that needed to happen. And by the way, there was a blockade by Egypt as well, so they obviously mm. felt the same way. But humanitarian aid can get in. No Hamas, no blockade, no war. It's as simple as that. And the world should be calling for Hamas's surrender and the immediate release of 244 people who are currently in Hamas clutches in Gaza. All right. And we should also remember there's a long history here where over 75 years, Israel has been the principal aggressor. In 1948, 700,000 Palestinian people were shoved off the land that they had lived in for generations. Mm -hmm. They had title deeds in many cases from the, Palest the British uh, mandate period, from the Ottoman period. It didn't matter. They were shoved off their land, just as they're being shoved off their land in the West Bank, aggressively and violently in recent weeks. Uh, Michael, briefly, you, uh, you'd, like, you'd like to come in and respond to that, what we've heard from John there.
Yeah, it's a mischaracterization of history. In 1948, seven Arab armies invaded Israel, trying to wipe them off the map in the intervening years since the Holocaust. So that's not what happened. They waged a war and they lost. You don't get to have it both ways. Since then, Israel has offered several peace deals to the Palestinians, each one of them they've rebuffed. Look, I am raising kids in this country. I want them to live in peace with their Palestinian neighbors. In my kids' school graduation, they sang a song of peace. When Palestinian kids are singing those same songs in their schools and educated to love Jews as we love our neighbors, there will be peace.